I'm here with Nate from Barstool Sports. Nate, I gotta say, last year your WSOP came to a bit of an unfortunate end. Have you recovered, regrouped, ready to go again? Yeah, most of those unfortunate ends are just 100% my fault. I've I've played six main events and I think I've punted off three of them at this point. You think so. you'd learn? No, no, okay. no that's, <laughs> yeah. Well, I keep telling myself this is the year that I just like, don't punt, but no promises. No, I can't do it again. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just happy to be back. It's, it, being out here is so cool. Just like walking into the room, even though you know I've done it so many times before, it's still awesome. I'm still very like lucky and fortunate, and just love being here. I'd like to say this is your year, and you know maybe it'll all go different. But so far, it seems like it's not been your year. <laughs> what has happened so far? I mean, you've rocked up on crutches for a start. I w this was so. Uh, this was like the year. I was gonna play the full summer. I made this big package. I got an Airbnb, and then a week before my flight, I shattered my foot into a million pieces. How? Us uh, uh, at war. No, I stepped mm -hmm. out of an Uber, and I just, I, I just demolished my foot, and I broke five bones, and so. I, uh, I had to cancel my Airbnb and a bunch of the package, but then my doctor cleared me uh, a couple, uh, like last week. So I made a new package and instead of, you know, sitting in the $600 deep stack, it's like you don't sit at home on your ass studying charts and watching videos to play 10-handed 600 deep stack. So we're battling in this 5K 6 max, which is just the sickest, funnest tournament I've ever played in so far. <laughs> and, and I heard though, apart from the, the smashed foot. There was also like a passport issue. Yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> Nothing's yeah. going right, right? Yeah, I, I'm here, IDs are checking out, depending on who's asking. I'm putting on like my Euro shades. I need a scarf if anybody has a scarf. I'm here to battle, I'm here to fight. It's, it's the WSOP, you know, like you don't need IDs and this and that. You just need heart, Euro shades, and to have people punt to you. So Mike, you had a great day the other day. You made it all the way to the final hurdle, but you just fell short. But I'm sure it still felt great, no? Wanted to jump off the dam. I was so depressed. I think I cried till three in the morning. I played amazing, amazing on day two and three. As, as many times I was all in with five, which was like five, six if you count the last one, I was really only at risk once where I caught a small card to get half on the river. Other than that, like, I, whenever I was all in, I, I like had a straight seven and five or a flush and five, so I was really never at risk. I just kind of watched, I really watched the final table dynamic and I noticed that people were playing way too fast with the big bets and, and, and not really protecting them. And when Martin got hot and they, they just kept going against him, I said, you know what? I'm sitting on three million, three and a half million. I'll take this guy on head up with 11 big bets. That's like three big hands to the river. We end up getting head up and the first hour I, I really had control and I was up to 5.5 million and I really felt I was going to win and I, um, I, I all of a sudden just, um, you know, those long days kind of catch up to you and I, I made a, a couple big bet mistake and and then I made a an incorrect fold that really hurt me and, um, but with all said and done, you know, uh, if I don't get unlucky on the last hand, I mean, uh, we're back at 3.8 million and, and seven big bets, it's game on. There was, no, don't take anything away from him. He outplayed, he was the better player the last hour, and because of that, I lost. If I would have played my A game, I think I, I would have won, and I blame only myself. And so the fact that I'm in that spot head up with a chance to get my first braces is my injury so people don't understand like until my documentary comes out in a few months like like how hard it is for me to get around if i win that bracelet i'm only the second person to win a bracelet in, in four decades me and phil helmet 90s 2000s, 2000s so it, was, it meant a lot do you think one more bracelet would solidify your hall of fame entry i, I don't need a bracelet so it, it should but i should be in it 10 years ago it doesn't matter well i deserve it for two reasons i'm the only one on the list that walks through the hallways and does 100 autobacks and picks a day and they come up to me and tell me what I've done for the game how they started playing because of me and uh, and how much I care about the game you know bracelets are just bracelets I've also made five WPT final tables I won NBC head up and I've had two losing months playing cash games in my life so wow.
Thank you, Mike. <laughs> All right, Ian Matekis, looking at the Player of the Year leaderboard right now, a lot of familiar faces, the usual suspects, Sean Deeb, Chad Evasledge, and then there's you that people may be unfamiliar with. Can you let us know who you are? Fill us in a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been playing professionally now for about four years. Uh, I do some coaching as well. Um, I like to hang out with friends and do all the normal stuff when I'm not playing poker, but uh, I spend a lot of time working on my game and playing poker itself, so yeah. A few people from the MSPT Tour, though, have said that you're a regular on there, but you also play some online, or at least your online bracelets. That's where that came. Do you play both? Would you consider yourself more of a live player or online? I would say more online, but I'm transitioning to live, I guess. Um, I mean, I'm always going to be here for WSLB at least, so yeah. Has it come as a surprise to you that you're on the leaderboard now, or was it something you uh, were chasing at any point? Um, it was never anything I was chasing. Now, of course, I'm working towards it. Um, I believe it's a combination of both running very well and the preparation I put in. So, yeah. Had you coming into this? Had you planned to play like an almost full series? Yeah, I was going to play everything. So this doesn't. You're not going to change your schedule to adjust. Uh, I mean, I might play a couple extra ones that I wasn't going to play for the player of the year points, but other than that, I'm playing pretty normal schedule, yeah. Do you think you could uh, beat Sean Deep this year? Uh, of course I believe in myself, yes. Obviously, he does have the advantage, or you could say, is it an edge that he does play the mixed game? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a huge advantage. Uh, I have been learning some mixed games, though, so he should watch out. He should watch out. And another thing I did hear from the MSPT crew is that they've been saying for a while now that you're one to watch. Maybe the next big thing in poker? Uh, I guess we'll see. People can say what they want to say, but yeah. yeah time will tell. Congratulations, Ryan Miller, your first World Series of Poker Bracelet. A massive moment for every poker player. What does it mean to you now to have that? Uh, I waited a long time and uh, I wasn't sure if it would ever come, but super excited to get one. I feel like I put a lot of time in poker and was deserving of one and now it finally came, so very excited. And a great event to get in, a championship event. Looking over your hand and Bob, you are uh, you play a lot of the split pot games. Is that something that you kind of specialize in or have an edge at? Yeah, I played them for from pretty much maybe the last 15, 20 years. I don't play many tournaments anymore, mostly play cash games. Uh, but I try to play at least a few tournaments at the series every year. Mostly will be the split games and finally got one to go exactly how I wanted. And looking back at the final table, you came into the day as with the chip lead, then you were kind of middle of the pack, you went to the shortest stack yeah. there, three-handed. Uh, did you, your confidence wane or were you you're feeling good throughout? Uh, I was always slightly confident, but yes, there was definitely a point when we were even four-handed. Uh, I was super short. I was just at that point hoping to stay along, maybe even just bump up one or two spots, not really expecting that I could win just because of the chip disadvantage. But uh, once one guy goes out, next guy heads up, I said, you know what, anything could happen. And I was short heads up, uh, just kind of kept trying to stay positive as much as I could. And once I took the lead, I felt like it's mine. And it was over and back quite a bit heads up. And then I think Bryn Kenny wanted to play through and you wanted to take a break. Did you go and regroup or what did you do? And because then you came back and you just went all the way. Uh, we had agreed earlier about taking the break at seven. Right, a little bit prior to seven, I had gotten very short. So he said, why don't we just play a little more to see if it ends or you double instead of taking the break now. And I kind of said, I'm really hungry. And he was like, okay, that's fine. And I didn't really, I mean, I just went to eat with friends, nothing. I mean, honestly, at dinner, I wasn't really expecting to win. I was just saying, you know, I'm going to see what happens. I have a chance, but I'm, I'm a definitely an underdog at this point. And, but right when I got back from dinner, I won a big pot pretty quickly. And at that point I thought I can do it. And uh, I was talking to Negrano and he said he expected you to win. He said, you are very, very good at this game. So no surprise there. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting next to him in a lot of the tournament. Uh, so we were talking back and forth about it. And yeah, he seemed like he thought that I was the best player in the field. And it happened, that, I mean, you need a lot of luck too. And it went my way, so. And final question, Alan Kessler passed through at one point. And I don't know if this is true or not, but he said that your nickname <laughs> is little, can I say it? S-H. Yes. A little shit stuck a long, maybe 20 years ago I got the nickname and it's pretty much stuck since all over. I would say at least half the people that address me will address that as opposed to Ryan. And I assume in an affectionate way. Yes, it's no, <laughs> no, ill, no. no ill manner at all, yeah. Awesome.
Don't forget to tune into PokerNews.com for all things World Series of Poker. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss a single moment.